Stephen King's Salem's Lot. Dramatized in seven episodes by Gregory Evans. Episode two. That's when it all started. The night Danny and Ralphie Glick went missing. Did you know those poor boys, Mark? They were my friends. It was my house they'd been to when they walked off into the woods. Looking back, I guess that wasn't really the beginning. The evil in the Marston house had been there for decades, waiting for something to release it. The other evil, the greater evil, the... What of the two boys? We found Danny that night, like I said. We searched for a week for Ralphie. The police dragged the river. The volunteers combed the woods and fields. Ben! Susan! What are you doing here? Looking for you. Ralphie! Dad wants you to come to dinner tomorrow night. Oh, thanks. I'd like that. Ralphie. Found anything? Mm. Oh, not a trace. Do you think he's dead? <sighs> yeah. I think Ralphie Glick is dead. No proof yet, but uh, I think so. I hope you're wrong. Mom's been sitting with Mrs. Glick. Poor woman's out of her mind. So's her husband. The other boy wanders around like a ghost. He's anemic, apparently, and they can't understand why. There are no wounds or cuts to be seen anywhere on his body. Nothing at all. And as all this was happening, other things were going on? Yes, Father. Bad things. Though I... I, I didn't know it then. Despite the business with the Glick boys, those first few weeks were happy. I was glad to be back in the lot, my book was going well, and there was Susan. Ironic, because it must have been about this time that Barlow slipped into the country, most likely with the help of Larry Crockett, maybe in a consignment of stuff for Barlow and Stricker's little antique shop in town. Here they are, 12 boxes, name of Larry Crockett, sign here. Here's your invoice. And don't strain yourselves. Hey, Mike, ain't that private? We gotta make sure it's the right stuff. We screw up and Larry will tack our asses to his bulletin board. Polish rocket chair, German clock, spinning wheels, sideboard. Jesus, Mike. Tourists. You could sell them a bag of cow shit if it was an old bag. Hank, there's no custom stamp on this one. Which? The big one, the one for the Marston house. All the rest is stamped every which way. This one's clean. For God's sake, Mike, who the hell cares? Let's just get this junk on the truck. <laughs> Cheer up, Hank. Job's half done. Yeah, the easy half. Jeez, Mike, that old shop was spooky enough. The Marsden house? What's wrong? Scared old Hubie will get you? Yeah, you joke. You don't exactly look thrilled yourself. See any lights behind them shutters? Nope. Place is darker than the grave. Come on. Let's get that sucker out of here and down that cellar. For Christ's sake, it's not the weight, it's this place. Hard out of you. I was never this scared of ma'am. Mike, watch out! Jesus, Hank! Pitch black, steps are slimy slick. I'm sweating like a hog. No wonder we dropped it. Couple more steps. Went down. That's it, I'm out of here. Mike, wait. Larry wants it. Larry wants it someplace he can put it there himself. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Jesus. Mike. 
Mike, wait for me! Hank, you look like someone's just giving your nuts a tweak. Here, have a shot of this. Thanks, Larry. Where's Mike? Dell's getting drunk. I didn't tell him, but I gotta tell you, Larry. I can't help it. I just gotta. Sure, Hank. Tell me everything. I seen something down in the cellar of that house. Yeah? A shirt, maybe some jeans, and a trainer. I saw a trainer, Larry. So? The Glick boy was wearing jeans. Read it in the ledger. Jeans, shirt, and trainers. Larry, what if... What if the guys that bought the house and that store... What if they done for the Glick kid? See your body down there, too? No, Larry, Because but... if you did, it'd be a matter for the police. And I'd drive you right down to see Parkins this minute. But, Hank, something like this, a lot of nastiness can come up. Uh, like that waitress at Dell's you've been seeing? Jackie, ain't it? I didn't see a body. Maybe you didn't see any clothes either. Maybe it was just, uh, rags. An old shirt tore up for cleaning. Sure. Y you got a good way of looking at things, Larry. Now, that bonus I promised you. You didn't say nothing about it. It wasn't it. You go to Dell's. Uh, hey, hi yeah. to Mike for me, will you? Uh, thank you for a good night's work. Yeah, okay. Sure. See ya. Yeah, I'll see ya. Yeah? Mr. Crockett? Mr. Straker. Thought it might be you. Everything is taken care of. Come in. Ah, morning, Mr. Mears. Eva told me to come up. Constable Gillespie. It's a surprise. Well, my wife just read your book, uh, Air Dance. Oh? She's kind of shy. <laughs> she thought maybe you might sign it. My pleasure, Constable. Uh, let's see. There you go. Though the way Weasel Craig tells it, your wife's been dead for 15 years. <laughs> Weasel say that? Uh-huh. You're here to brace me. Uh, I'll ask a question or two, yeah. Like, uh, where were you the night that Ralphie Glick went missing? From 9.30 on, I was searching the woods with you. I was thinking of a little earlier, Mr. Mears, say, oh, between 6 and 7. Am I a suspect? I ain't got no suspects. Thing like this, I'm out of my league. Uh, catching drunk drivers out by Dell's is more my line. So, where were you? Well, suppose uh, I don't want to tell you. I might think you had something to hide. Now, you know the older boy's dead, don't you? Danny Glick? Mm. No. No, I hadn't heard that. When? Early this morning. The doc out at Central Maine General said the kid was looking better, too. Got <laughs> some color back in his cheeks. Uh, there's no accounting for it, is there? I've got nothing to hide. I'm just tired of being the stranger in town. Pointed out in the street, nudged over in the library. Now you want to know if I got Ralphie Glick's scalp in my closet. Look, the night the kids went missing, I was having dinner with Susan Norton and her folks. At the Nortons all evening, were you? Uh, from about uh, 7 until I got the call from the Glicks. And before 7? I left here around 6, walked to the Nortons by way of Schoolyard Hill. Well, that's a bit of a detour. It was a fine evening. I felt like a stroll. Anyone see you? Well, not as far as I know. Well, that don't clear you as well as I'd like. What are you writing about here? Hey, none of your damn business. You keep your hands and your eyes off it, unless you got a warrant. You're kind of touchy, aren't you, for a man who writes books to be read? When it's in print, I'll see you get four signed copies. Till then, it comes under the heading of private papers. Fair enough. For the record, I don't think he ever saw the Glick boy, but it's my job to ask. Yeah, understood. Mr. Mears, in a pissant little burg like Salem's Lot, you're the stranger in town. Till you've been here 20 years. I won't keep you from your work. I got to make another call.
How good of you to call, Inspector. <laughs> Just plain old constable. Well, you've uh, done it up nice, Mr. Straker. What exactly can I do for you? I came to welcome you to town. So how do you like that old house? Needs a great deal of work, but my partner and I have plenty of time. Well, your uh, partner around? Uh, Mr. Barlow, ain't it? He's on a buying trip in New York. He won't be back for several days. Oh, is that so? What's Mr. Barlow's first name, by the way? Court, with a K. Hmm. Well, I hope you'll both have the best of luck. And when you do see Mr. Barlow, uh, tell him I'd like to meet him. I shall, Constable Gillespie. He enjoys company. Mom said Parkins Gillespie was checking up on you today. <laughs> this is a small town. Uh, Mom had you practically tried and convicted. Yeah. She doesn't like me much, does she? No. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I got your dad on my side. He knows class when he sees it. <laughs> ben? Yeah? I don't want a soda. Let's go to the park instead. Here? Yeah, that'll do fine. Here, let me spread my jacket. <sighs> so, what's this new book about? Oh, single-minded sort of girl, aren't you? Subject changer. Okay, I'll tell you. Just let me think uh, how to put it together. Can you kiss me while you think? Probably not. We could give it a try. Hmm. Ben. Yeah? Make love to me. Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, I want that. Here. On the ground. FBI Portland. Uh, hello there. This is Parkins Gillespie. I'm a constable at Jerusalem's Lot Township. Uh -huh. We got us a missing boy up here. Uh, Ralph Glick. That's him. That's him. Uh, can you check on some fellas for me? That's why we're here. All right. Benjamin Mears. That's M-E-A-R-S. He's a writer. The, the other two are sort of stapled together. Kurt with a K... Barlow. You were going to tell me about the book before we got so sweetly distracted. <laughs> well, it is about the Marsden House. I thought so. You know so much about it all, about who be about the past. Well, I did a lot of research. How? I talked to the Boston police, but mostly... I talked to an old woman named Manella Corey, Bertie Marston's sister. Seventy-nine years old and sharp as a pin. Hubie was a mobster. I told you so. Yeah, but he didn't run liquor. He was a contract killer. Oh, no. Huh. In the late twenties, Hubie was arrested a few times by the Boston police for gangland killings. It never charged. The thing that finished him wasn't business at all. It was the brutal and sadistic murder of an 11-year-old boy. Oh, Ben. Hubie's employers got him off the hook. He moved to here, lived quietly. Or, uh, so people thought. What do you mean? While Hubie Marston was living in that house, four children disappeared. Their bodies were never found. If my book is about anything, it's about the recurrent power of evil. You don't think that Ralphie Glick... ...was gobbled up by the vengeful spirit of Hubie Marston? Something like that. Uh, you're asking the wrong guy. Uh, don't forget, I'm the kid that opened a door and saw Hubie hanging from a beam. That's not an answer. No, no, it's not. Uh, come over here. You can see the house from here. There's 
There's something about it. Chilling. I believe that the evil man do lives on. I think that house has been sitting up there all those years, holding the essence of Hubert Marson's evil in its old moldering bones. I thought I'd come back here, maybe rent the house and, oh, I don't know, confront my own terrors, I suppose, or, or, or tap into its atmosphere and write a book scary enough to make me a million dollars. Whatever. I felt I'd be in control of the situation. But now... Now what, man? Now the Marston house is occupied. A child has disappeared and I don't know what to make of it. Maybe it's got nothing to do with that house, but... I don't believe it. What then? Ghost spirits? Not necessarily. Maybe just some harmless guy who admired the house when he was a kid, bought it and became, uh... possessed. Do you know something about... The new tenant? No. I'm just guessing. But if it is the house, I'd rather it was possession than, uh, something else. What? Perhaps it's attracted another evil man. You going back to Eva's? Get on with the book? Nah. I feel too restless. Maybe I'll drive out to that bar. What's it called? Dell's? Yeah, Dell's. Mm -hmm. Good night, Susan. Is that it? Better be it. Your mother's watching us from the window. Ben. Yeah. I love you. A few days later, on the first real day of fall, Danny Glick was buried in the Harmony Hill Cemetery. The tragedy that had fallen so suddenly on the Glick family, one son dead, the other still missing, was rare enough in Jerusalem's lot to ensure that a good portion of the town turned out. Lord God, through your mercy, those who have lived in faith find eternal peace. Bless this grave and tell your shell angels shocked. to watch over it. After that service, I'm not surprised. As we bury the body of Daniel Why Clay. did he do that? Welcome him what? into your the presence. The open coffin is more. And with your saints, let Poor him kid looked asleep. Like he was going to open his he eyes any minute. Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Who's the Faith priest? Christ, Father the Callahan. From St. Andrews. He's good. <laughs> they say he likes the bottle. Let so us pray to God, who gives life to all things. We pray for our brother Daniel to our Lord Jesus, who told us, I am the resurrection and the life. The man who believes in me shall live, even though he dies. No! And every little no, you ain't gonna throw dirt on my boy! Well, will never suffer until he's dead. Daddy! Daddy! Danny, that'll Lord, do now! Get to the death of Lazarus, your friend. Danny, God damn it! Stop this messing around! We ask this in faith. Lord, Lord hear our Lord, prayer. You raise the dead to life. Give our brother Daniel eternal life. We ask this in faith. Danny, you Lord, stop Lord, it now! You got your Danny mama's skirt! Let me go! Let me go! Give him I want my boy! Danny, come out of there! He was nourished with your body and blood. He ain't dead! He ain't dead! He ain't dead. It can't be! He's only 12 years old! Daddy! Lord, hear our prayer. Daddy! You all right? Yeah. God knows how the Glicks must feel. Yeah. And it uh, never goes away. Ben, did something happen to you? My uh, my wife was killed in a motorcycle accident three years ago. Oh, Ben, why didn't you tell me before? Uh, I, 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 I don't talk about it. Maybe I should. I was driving. She was behind. We skidded on a patch of oil. I got up and walked away. She didn't. What was her name? Miranda. Oh, Ben. 
<laughs> I meant to tell you. At the right time. Hi, you two. Uh, <clears throat> Mike. Susan. You know Mike Ryerson? Of course. How was the service? Guess it was a hard one. Very hard. You've come to fill the grave? Yep. Seen Hank Peters anywhere? No, sorry. He's supposed to be helping me. If he don't turn up, I shan't be done before dark. Say, you know who's planted there? Where you're resting? No. Name's almost covered. Probably ought to leave it like that. Oh, oh God. Hubert Barclay Marston, 1889. To 1939. I must have seen that hundreds of times. Still gives me the goosebumps. God grant he lies still. Constable Gillespie? Yeah. Uh, Agent Hanrahan. Mm. I've got the information you requested. There's not much of a hook. Uh -oh. Just give me what you got. Uh, Benjamin Mears, mm -hmm. involved in a motorcycle smash in upstate New York, 1991. His wife was killed. Mm -hmm. No charges. His politics are leftish. Mm -hmm. You want details? No, 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 no. Uh, what about the other two fellas? Kurt Barlow, mm -hmm. British citizen, born in Germany or further east, mm -hmm. fled to England in the war. Probably in his 70s. Uh, dates are a little vague. Mm. Been in the import export business in London for 30 years, most of that time with Straker. Mm -hmm. Straker seems to be the fellow who deals with the public. Barlow's rarely seen. Oh, is that so? Richard Throckett Straker, <laughs> British by birth, mm -hmm. 58 years old. They both applied for U.S. visas 18 months ago. That's all we've got. Uh. Except that they may be an item, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, about what I thought. And no known connection between them and Mears. Mm. You need more help, just call. Hank? Hank, that you? Come on out. Stop screwing around. Damn you, Peters. The sun's gone down and I'm still here shoveling. Look at it. Damn waste. Are you referring to the coffin? Jesus! What in hell are you doing creeping up like that? Could have given me heart failure. Who are you, anyway? My name is Barlow. I am a recent resident of your lovely town. Guy who bought the Marston house, right? You spoke of the waste. You meant this fine casket. Solid mahogany. And here I am, shoveling dirt onto it. Shame. Why not give the money to the March of Dimes or something? Do some good. Ah, good. Everyone wants to do good. Look here, at the casket, how the earth covers it, like a shroud. Jesus, thought I'd done more than that. Beneath the earth, the lid of the coffin. Beneath the lid, the poor child, Daniel, with his eyes open. What? Gazing up at you. No, that can't be. Can't you feel it? Feel his gaze? No. 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 There. The coffin. He wants you to open it. Wants you to release him. Hey, mister. Are you trying to hypnotize me? He wants to be free. Stop it. Stop it. Get down in. The grave. Get down in the grave and 
and free that poor child. Here, take your shovel. Break it open. been listening to episode two of Salem's Lot by Stephen King, with Stuart Milligan as Ben Mears, Teresa Gallagher as Susan Norton, and Danny Canaber as Mark Petrie. John Moffat played Straker, Shelley Thompson, and Norton, Harry Taub, Bill Norton, Don Fellows, Parkins Gillespie, Matt Zimmerman, Larry Crockett, Doug Bradley, Barlow, Ronald Fernie, Mike Ryerson, and Peter Yap, Father Graton. Gavin Muir was Matt Burke, David Jarvis, Hank Peters, Peter Whitman, Weasel Craig, Nigel Anthony, Father Callahan, and David Freed, Danny Glick. Salem's Lot is dramatized in seven episodes by Gregory Evans, with music composed by Elizabeth Parker of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The director is Adrian Beans.